uh, it will be interactive. So uh, feel free to, to interact, to give uh, uh, your uh, advice and uh, what you think about the images. And there will be three or four quiz according to the time left. And uh, the first one is this one. This patient was referred at 24 uh, weeks uh, of gestation uh, because of the length of the corpus callosum which was uh, considered as uh, uh, small, uh, reduced. Um, and uh, it will be a short question like that um, for this patient. What do you think? Do uh, you think it's normal midline? There is shortness of the corpus callosum. There is a, a ascension of the third ventricle, absence of the cavum septum pellicidae. And uh, what about uh, follow-up or no, no need for follow-up? So, Normal midline, what do you think? No. Oh. Short, okay, short, two for sure. Uh, the third ventricle, in place or not? So, as uh, you can see here, oh, sorry. Um, uh, ah. <laughs> uh, this is not uh, the third ventricle, the cavum septum pellicidae here. Uh, and this is the third ventricle, which is in place, in fact. So, um, shortness of the corpus callosum, yes, for sure. At 22, it should be 22. So, uh, at 20, almost 25, it's short. And um, what do you think uh, about the follow-up? You will uh, do a follow-up? I think it's a good idea. Um, so, uh, this is the follow-up. So, uh, in the same time, uh, I saw patients at 27 and uh, at 29. And at 29, uh, I do both uh, uh, neutrosound and MR. And uh, this is uh, the coronal view. So, uh, sagittal and coronal view. And um, what do you think? Uh, the corpus callosum is uh, still short. Um, you think that there is a degenesis of the corpus callosum? You think there is a hemorrhagic lesions of the posterior part of the corpus callosum? You think it, it can be uh, tubular, nodular, liripoma? And uh, what do you think about this pathology? Severe, not severe, benign? Um, so for you, what is the correct answer? Four. Tubulo nodular lipoma, okay. And that's it. Okay. Corpus callosum degenesis. For sure, if there is a lipoma, there is, most of the time, a corpus callosum degenesis. You know the two types of lipoma. There is two types of uh, lipoma. Uh, there is the tubulo nodular lipoma, which is uh, surrounding the corpus callosum, and another lipoma which is surrounding the corpus callosum, which is the peri. Um, I will show you the curvilinear lipoma. There is two types. I will discuss the two types. Um, now, the question is: We sorry. Regarding the curvilinear lipoma, what is a curvilinear lipoma? It's most of them associated with a short corpus callosum, minor or moderate corpus callosum degenesis, better identification at the last stage of pregnancy. MR diagnosis is based on the characteristic hypersignal on T1 sequences, characteristic of fatty contents. And T2 weighted sequences imaging are most often normal. This is, in fact, a curvilinear lipoma, this one, and we'll discuss. What do you think? As we did with a sh short corpus callosum, yes or no? Yes. yes. This is a case where the corpus callosum is short, and you have this, okay, moderate or minor corpus callosum degenesis. Yes. Identification of the lipoma is better 
in the last stage of pregnancy. Yes, you show how it was at here, and it become like this. So you see that the identification of the lipoma will be better in the third or the second half of pregnancy. You know also that lipoma, uh, when you do an MR, uh, you find the lipoma on T1 because it's a hypersignal. But you need a lot of fat. In the prenatal period, you will not see hypersignal with T1. But instead, you will find a hyposignal here on T2. So if you uh, do not, if your radiologist do not do a ultrasound, and if he is not aware of that, he will never think that is fat. Because for a radiologist, postnatal radiologist, fat is a hyper signal in T2 and T1. And here, because the, quant the amount of fat is reduced, it's not enough to get a hyper signal on T1. And I will not discuss, because it's too uh, complicated, why there is hypo signal in T2, but this characteristic. And uh, I will show the patients after birth here on T1. It's characteristic, but you are in the postnatal period. OK? And you see, on T2, you don't have the hypo signal, though the signal of fat will change. So it's a pitfall <coughs> for such diagnosis. This is the two type. You have the tubulonodular, which is most of the time anterior, which is associated with many anomalies of the faces of the face. And you have the curvilinear lipoma. The dysgenesis is less severe. And you have most of the time no anomalies of the face. On this type of situation, the cognitive outcome is, in most of the time, a good outcome. So when you go back to uh, this story, most of the time, you find a short corpus callosum when you do your ultrasound in the second trimester. When you are dealing with short corpus callosum, you think about cognitive issues and Top time, you cancel for termination of pregnancy. If you have your short corpus callosum and you see there is an echogic line above the corpus callosum, you have to think that it can be a pericalosal lipoma. In that case, you have to follow the pregnancy, and two or three weeks later, you will see that the echogic has increased. In that case, you can confirm that it's lipoma, and for the baby, it's good. Because in that case, the cognitive outcome will be good compared to the uncertain prognosis of a short corpus callosum. Okay. So it's, it's, it's very important. I will show you, uh, it was a resident uh, in the hospital. She was pregnant. And uh, there was a first uh, ultrasound performed by uh, one of our physician, And uh, it told me, um, it's funny, I, I think uh, the corpus callosum is short. Uh, we are 23 and it's uh, uh, 19. For sure, it's short. But I have a look at uh, his ultrasound and I say, do you think the pericallosal circus is too echogenic here? Uh, too echogenic. Um, and uh, this uh, patient uh, was uh, in early days and uh, I have the opportunity to see her uh, some weeks after. And this is at 27. You see, here it was tiny, but here it's obvious if you know that you are looking for fat here. OK? So this is a very important issue when you are dealing with short corpus callosum. Yes? It's difficult. Uh, the question is, uh, can we differentiate partial agenesis or short corpus callosum? Um, because 
uh, it can be interesting to do uh, some tractography in such cases. Because you see, you see the splenium, the genu, and you see the restroom. So you have the, uh, the feeling that the corpus callosum is compressed by the pericallosal lipoma, which is present uh, before, because you know that lipoma is just um, a lack of resorption of the primitive meninges between four and five weeks of gestation. And because of this lack of resorption, these primitive meninges will transform in fat. So the fattest tissue will be present before the development of the corpus callosum. And because of that, maybe the, uh, uh, the axons are compressed. I cannot say that. But because we know that this kind of uh, degenesis are mild with a good outcome, it can be more uh, uh, degenesis than a, a real uh, partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. Yes? V v v very make a uh, this is uh, above. In, so, in fact, sometimes it's just a little bit, not in the midline, but a little bit off midline. But it's always above the corpus callosum. And uh, if, we can, if we go back to this one, you see uh, the corpus callosum is here, and the uh, lipoma is above. Okay? And in the pericallosal lipoma, most of the time, the uh, the thickest part is, is more posterior than in the uh, case of uh, tubulo nodular. Uh, yes. This is uh, uh, our uh, MR. Nothing on MR. I, I put signal here. And this is after birth. And you see, this is important for you, but important also for radiologists. Because when they perform the MR, if they are not aware of that, they will miss the diagnosis. And uh, so uh, this uh, will, uh, will online, is online and will be, uh, in fact, uh, the paper will be soon in, in the white journal. Um, so it's limitation and pitfall in the prenatal diagnosis of pericallosal curvinal lipoma based on a specific image pattern. Okay? Quiz two. Uh, it's easier. Uh, this patient was referred for borderline ventriculomegaly. Uh, and uh, I have a question for you regarding cerebral maturation and regarding what we did this morning and uh, we said about uh, Cillian Fisher. For you, this patient is approximately at 24, 26, 28, 32. Or other choice. So you look here. You 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 see. You know that at 24 it should be square, square, and after the temporal lobe will recover the insula. <coughs> so is it square? No, it's open. So there is maybe other choice, which can be 20, 22, but but but. So you know that. Uh, I saw Rabi uh, show this this morning. But we are, in fact, in this patient at uh, 26. So you put your pole at 26, we fear for mild ventricular megaly, and you have this. So if you do an analysis of the, this. What do you see? Is it the ribbon, cortical ribbon, or is it the surface of the brain? Is ultrasound the echogic line? Is it the cortex, or is it the surface of the brain? Uh, in, for sure, it's the interface be between the subarachnoid space and the parenchyma. So it's the surface of the brain. You don't see the cortex. With ultrasound, you don't see the cortex. Somebody tells you that it's a sick cortex, and no, the cortex is not seen. You see just an interface because it's parenchyma and parasol spaces. 
So what you can say, there is a lack or a pathological maturation of the sealant fissure, and there is a smooth surface, okay? So according to that, if it's a smo smooth surface, what do you think are the diagnoses which are the most likely? Diffuse polymicral dryer, cobblestone encephaly, severe simplified gyral pattern, sub-epidermal atrotopia, encephaly type 1. So, uh, diffuse polymicral dryer. Nobody. Cobblestone is encephaly. One, two. Uh, you know, cobblestone is encephaly. There is, in fact, um, a problem, an issue with migration, but there is over migration. That means that uh, the neurons will migrate within the prehistoric spaces. So the echogenicity here will not be anechoic, it will be hyperechoic because it will be full of neurons which over migrate. In that case, uh, the uh, echogenicity is normal. So there is no over migration. Severe simplified gy gyral pattern. You know what this? It's microcephaly because there is a lack of proliferation in germinal matrix. So there is less cells. So because you have less cells, you have a small uh, microcephaly. And because of that, the gyral, gyral pattern is very simplified. And in some, uh, in some case, it's very, very simplified. So you have something very smooth, which looks like a lysencephaly, but it's not a lysencephaly. Because lysencephaly here can have a smooth more cortex. And when you are uh, sonographers, or you are doing only ultrasound, when you see a smooth cortex, you can say, yes, it's, uh, it's lysencephaly. Because the different uh, most of the lysencephaly type 1, are a smooth cortex. But smooth cortex can be encountered in lysencephaly type 1, severe simplified gyral pattern, and also the undulated pattern can be so small that you have the feeling that it's smooth. That this one, this one, and this one are correct. I can show you, uh, if you were at um, the pre-course, uh, I showed the maturation of the brain. At, at the end, I showed a uh, lack of maturation, and it was a diffuse polymic cordial. It was exactly the same image. So, because what you are looking at here is the surface and not the ribbon. If you want to see the ribbon, it will be interesting to do an MR to differentiate between this, this, and this. Because when it's diffuse, it will be you will see more undulated, and we will see the ribbon. When it's lysencephaly, we will see abnormal migration, and severe simpl simplified gyral uh, pattern, you will see a normal, in fact, a normal ribbon. So in that case, we did the NOMAR. So on the NOMAR, what you are at 7 or 28 weeks of gestation. What do you see, and what your diagnosis with this? For sure, you can differentiate the three entities with the MR. Because here, the ribbon is well visible. You see, the, it's, you don't see the surface. You see really the hypointensity of, is in fact, the, uh, the cortex. Uh, but this is a part of the cortex. But what all this? You know, it's a, it was a, there is a, OK. Which features? are present in this case. Undulated cortical ribbon. There is no undulate, undulation at all. Diffuse neuronal migration anomaly. What do you think? Is there diffuse neuronal migration anomalies? Yes, of course. Why? Because all this uh, hypointensity, this, this uh, laminated pattern, it's very abnormal at 28 weeks. That means all neurons coming from the germinal matrix going to the cortical surface have stopped in the middle of the pathway. And all these are neurons which do not migrate. And this is the definition of a lysencephaly type 1. 
it's a diffuse neural, neuronal migration uh, pathology. Okay? So, over migration, no, no over migration. This over migration, it's identically type 2. And megalencephaly. Megalencephaly, can you tell me what is the process, the anal process in megalencephaly? Um, to all this process, all these pathologies of the, uh, will be divided in three uh, large entities. The first one is trouble in the proliferation, trouble in the migration, and trouble in corticogenesis, on the cortical organization. When you are dealing with um, polymicrogyria, it's the cortex, formation of the cortex. When you are dealing with uh, encephaly or uh, heterotopia, it's the migration itself. Some cluster of neurons do not migrate and stay uh, on subvulnerable surface, and this, this kind of uh, things that you can feel uh, found with a filamine mutation. This is a diffuse neural migration, and for megalencephaly, what it is. In fact, it's a pathology of the proliferation. The proliferation, the number of neurons in the germinal matrix are okay, but the phenotype of the cells itself is pathologic. That means you have very large cells, and all these cells which uh, give you the cortex and the white matter. But because of its very giant cells, they cannot organize and migrate correctly. And because it's a mutation on one side of the hemisphere, or on one part of one hemisphere, all the cells, neurons, and white matter, glial cells, will be abnormal. Because they are large, there is some, num num some number of cells on both sides. But because they are large, it increases the volume of the brain on one part. So if you are dealing with proliferation disorders, you have a decreased number of cells when you have primitive microcephaly. When you are dealing with the phenotype of the cells, you are dealing with megalencephaly. When you are dealing with migration, it can be heterotopia. Diffuse migration is antiphyl type 1. Over migration is antiphyl type 2. Corticogenesis, polymicrogyria. It's clear? Okay. I, I think it, 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 it could be a good, uh, good course uh, just to correlate the, the different steps of the formation of the cortex uh, with all these conditions. Yes? How do you interpret the, in the top left image? Um, the, um, it, it looks as if the carbon septum pellucidum is, is divided in two portions. Yes, or, I, I or think I, I'm a little bit uh, low because I think it's the fornix colon. The fornix. Yes, here, 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 I think so. Mm. You are a little bit uh, up here. Okay, so uh, perfect. Okay, isn't it here? This is another example of uh, Lisan Septavol. So, um, I did uh, this uh, editorial uh, in uh, July, last July, uh, uh, some, uh, in fact, tools to elucidate decreased cephalic biometry. And one tool is do not assume that a smooth cerebral surface using ultrasound is similar to Lisan Cephaly. It can be also diffuse polymic disorder, uh, uh, microcephaly with a simplified general pattern. So in that case, it's very interesting to do a demo to have a real good interpretation of the thickness or, uh, of the anomalies of uh, the ribbon, which may be undulated in the case of polymic disorder. OK? Uh, now, yeah, we have. It's okay? Uh, five minutes? Okay. Uh, if you want to stay more, I, I can stay more. I have a... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, case four. Patients with fear at 25 weeks of testation due to abnormal CNS organization. So, sorry for uh, this, uh, because uh, there is... Uh, but I did that just for you to uh, have a good view of what I want to show you on the proximal part uh, on the distal part, sorry, of uh, the brain. Uh, and 
to come back to the question, uh, what do you think? Uh, based on the supratotal structures, uh, the sonographic imaging features uh, are sub ependymal heterotopia, Sylvian Fisher operculation in accordance with gestalt age, we are 25, pericerebral hemorrhage, over migration, distortion of the intermiphic fissure. Flavia. Yes. Two. Okay. You say, you say four. Okay. Uh, who say four? One, two, yes. Five or six people say four. Who say uh, periserbal hemorrhage? Five. Five. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I understand why you say five, and yesterday uh, I told myself I shouldn't put this one here. Because uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, straight, but here we can discuss. But uh, we'll say that it's straight. So um, f don't for forget this one, there was no distortion at all. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, what, what do you, th uh, you, you say, Antonio, that it was four? Uh, what do you see? thick layer just around the ventricles over there. And uh, you have described in the sagittal view the king. Uh, 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 we Sorry. go, it's the, it's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you are a good, uh, a good reader of the medical literature. <laughs> uh, yes, you are right. You see the surface is here and you can, uh, you lost the surface here because it was full of neurons here. So it, there was over migration of neurons. Uh, and uh, we'll speak a little bit later about this over-migration. Um, so over-migration was a good answer. Based on so sonographic analysis, um, what do you think? Uh, we are 25, normal TCD, vermian degenesis, embryonic aspect of the brainstem, infratentorial over-migration, and callosal degenesis. Normal TCD, we are 25, it's 28, It's okay, yeah. okay. After 25, it's uh, uh, after 24, there is uh, uh, in fact uh, asymptotic curve of the growth of the uh, the TCD, so it's correct. Verm degenesis. Where is the, the vermis here? Very difficult to say. Where is the vermis? Okay. What do you think about the brainstem? Yes, I mean, if you follow the brainstem, it's going here here and here. So there is a kink brainstem, okay? Um, is there any other migration? Uh, in fact, look at the brainstem. It's the hyperechogenic part. But what's this the hyperechogenicity here? And the hyperechogenicity which here surrounding the cerebellum. It's exactly the same thing. It's over migration of neurons which go in the peristal spaces. As you know, may know, uh, when you are at eight weeks of pregnancy, the brainstem is kinked, and it will be straight after that. But because of the over-migration, it is stuck in the primitive aspect, and it stays in this primitive aspect because of the over-migration, okay? So uh, this is, in fact, uh, all is okay. Uh, so this is suggestive of diffuse over-migration, this is, is it diffuse over migration? Yes, I, I just show you that it's supra and infratentorial. Cobblestone encephaly. Yes, it's a, uh, the other name. Dystroglida canopathy. Yes, but perhaps <laughs> we will speak about that. Most likely mutation of POMT1 and POMT2. Yes, it can be, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, the genes which are most uh, often involved in such over-migration is POMT1 and POMT2. walker warburg syndrome, yes, it's the name of all this, okay? So what's this dystroglycanopathy? There is some molecules of dystroglycan, which are here just to say to the neurons, stop to migrate. 
it's enough, and now you stop to migrate. There is very set basis here, germinal matrix here, you stop. But this, this glycan should be glycosylate. You understand glycosylate? I, I'm not sure that's a good. Because of this mutation, there is a defect in the glycosylation of the discoglycan. And it's inactive, the discoglycan. So the discoglycan stays like that, and the neurons mm. go like that. It's a discoglycanopathy related to POMT1. It gives you diffuse overmigration. For the pathologist, it's a colossal mesencephaly. And with all this, it's Walker Arbor. It's all the same thing. Okay? It's very clear. Mm. Uh, okay, so when you, what's interesting, uh, you see that over migration is not well visible in MR, it's better with ultrasound. Well, you see it, uh, it was echogenic, but it's, uh, with MR, it's less visible than with ultrasound. And you see that the surface go to the vault because of this over migration. Okay, so you see on the pathological specimen, all these are this, the cortex stops there, and if you do histology, the cortex is here, and all these are neurons in the peri uh, spaces. So it was, so this, uh, this paper that we published uh, last year. I have another case, if uh, there is a score just to stay, uh, and it, it will be enough. Okay, yes, okay, okay. So uh, it's, this one is uh, simple. Uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, such case uh, in previous session. Um, the patients will refer, in fact, uh, for uh, anomalies uh, on the brain, suspected, and also on uh, uh, extra cerebral anomalies. Um, there is something wrong with uh, the vermis for uh, the guys who did the the scan, and uh, you are the expert. And the question is, uh, why do you think uh, you are 21, normal cerebellar biometry, TCD, normal fourth ventricle, cerebellar pedunculus anomaly, Vermian Vermian degenesis, and black post schist? What do you think about that? The, uh, the fourth ventricle is normal for you? No. Oh, no, not normal. Why it's? It's, it's longer. Ah, it's longer, yes. Why is longer? Yes, because the pedoncle are elongated and thickened, okay? So this is the more to sign. And there is the amandogenesis. Sometimes there is a cyst here, a cystic structure. Don't say this is a black spore schist. It looks like, but in black spore schist, the vermin is completely normal, and it's very normal. Here, if you, if you say it's a, uh, just a black spore schist, uh, you will have some surprise at birth. Uh, so don't, uh, okay. So this patient was refer for uh, other anomalies. In keeping with the cerebral features, you are looking for the following anomalies. Cardiopathy, anoploidy, anomalies of the extremities, ecogic kinase, important to look for the fetal sex. What do you think? Three and four, yes, three and four. Uh, are you a radiologist, a uh, genetician? Yes. Ah, thank you. Uh, okay, perfect. Okay, why? Because um, you are in this kind of situation, and as you say uh, perfectly about uh, this, if you put this on this way, uh, it looks like uh, a molar tooth, okay? This is, in fact, uh, the same thing. Sometimes you have a, a larger cyst here, but you keep the fact that the fourth ventricle is elongated in AP diameter. In that case, you have this kind of cyst, but you can say, oh, it's a black post cyst. Yes, but with a black post cyst, we do never have this kind of images. So in that case, 
the baby has also very large and ecogenic kinase. This is, in fact, in the white list of thandomic entities uh, with ecogenic kinase, you have thiliopathies. And this is thiliopathies, juber, and juber-like thandom. Okay, what is uh, the other thing that you can find? This one was referred for exadactyly. When you have a patient refer for exadactyly, even it's a black patient, because exadactyly is very uh, often common uh, in the black population, you have to have a look at the fourth ventricle, because it can be, for sure, a Joubert if it's a de novo mutation. This is uh, exadactyly, and it was the case with the molortus. So this is some cases of Joubert syndrome, so you have to know uh, the semiology of the molar tooth, but you have to know also that you can enter in Joubert syndrome by the extremities and by the kinase. Okay? Um, so uh, we published in uh, uh, 2014 this case, this uh, article, saying that it's uh, easier to do the diagnosis uh, just by looking at the uh, fourth ventricle. The fourth ventricle, as you know, the AP diameter is uh, smaller than the first diameter, and because of the elongation, there will be a deformation, which is characteristic of the molar tooth, and that's it. Okay?